Consumers sometimes are confused about what happens when they fix their damaged car. The Dan York State of Mind program is brought to you in part by Lookout Rhode Island and Taco Comfort Solutions. I know I am. Uh, I think most of us, if you, you know, you run your car into a pole or worse, just want to know, is insurance going to cover it? And then after that, you just kind of, uh, but you also want to make sure that you're getting the right kind of fix for the vehicle. And some of us get more curious than others, but the auto parts industry and or the auto body industry, rather, and the uh, insurance industry, here in Rhode Island have been at loggerheads for, for some time on, on the issues, and there's a new bill right now. As you watch this program, it probably is coming out to the full Senate body today to extend the time that demands factory parts to replace what has been damaged. Uh, we've got two really smart people on both sides of the issue to talk to us about it this evening, so I'm glad you're aboard to uh, learn a little bit. Um, and depending on where the travel of this program is, you may see this once or twice. So originally, we aired this program uh, on the day after the of course, you're seeing it tonight on, on Wednesday evening. Uh, but the uh, Supreme Court uh, issued a, a decision yesterday that's got people kind of giddy, actually, here in Rhode Island, especially the governor, who I think wholly irresponsibly put $23 million in the budget, counting on sports gaming. We mentioned this yesterday. Here's the headline uh, in the Providence Journal and a uh, closer look. The the, uh, the 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 push for sports gaming and a, a, a session actually scheduled in Senate Finance today allegedly was uh, um, um, coincidental in terms of the timing of the Supreme Court decision. Uh, here's a little bit from the network on what happened yesterday. One day, the court struck down the 1992 Professional Sports and Amateur Protection Act that barred sports gambling nearly every place but Nevada. Writing for the court, Justice Samuel Alito said, Congress can regulate sports gambling directly, but if it elects not to do so, each state is free to act on its own. Okay, so now in 2014, we voted to, to clear table gaming at, at, at Twin River. Interestingly enough, two times the folks in Newport have said no at Newport Grand. But the folks in Tiverton, by two points, said yes to the whole enchilada. And so the new facility in Tiverton will mirror that which is at Twin River. Now, enter sports gaming. And uh, here's uh, some of the information that they gave you at the voter booth on uh, voting day on 2014. You're supposed to read this stuff. Nobody does. Nobody reads this stuff. But here's what it says about casino gaming. Uh, any and all table and casino style games played with cards, dice, or equipment for money, credit, or any representative of value, including but not limited to roulette, blackjack, big six, craps, poker, back rack, pie gal, and any banking or percentage game or any other game or device included within the definition of class three gaming as termed in the U.S. Code, da 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 da. And of course, as you're voting on this, you wouldn't know what the heck class three gaming is if, you, if, you're, if it hits you in the head. Well, that little note is enough for the Senate uh, to already articulate that this is a constitutional move to bring sports betting in. Class 3 gaming is actually defined in the U.S. Code as anything that's not Class 1 and 2. Oh, you don't even know what Class 1 and 2 is, so why would you know what Class 3 is? And I think that'll be the argument that somebody may bring to the table when they litigate against the constitutionality of sports gaming. Now, look. The only constitutional remedy for that would be a vote in the fall, which I think could be done. So we're going to be somewhere, I think, between legislation and a vote. And that's where the debate is going to be over the next couple of weeks. Warp speed, because we want to beat Massachusetts, according to the DOR director. Looking for ideas and innovation um, on ways to make our uh, casinos um, the most attractive. It's a competitive situation with Massachusetts and Connecticut. Interestingly enough, the Senate president today said on the radio on WPRO that he's uh, so excited about this that he's thinking about satellite operations, like in Westerly and stuff, so we can get some Connecticut, <laughs> Connecticut sports gaming business. That would require a vote. That's inarguable because all of this is contextually contained inside the operation of a casino. Anyway, uh, how you watch ball games is most likely going to change in America and in Rhode Island, certainly Massachusetts when those casinos come online. 
It'll be interesting to see, though, what, uh, what the NFL, the NBA, the NCAA are able to do with Congress to see if they can go back to the drawing board and have an overall overarching law. All right, let's move on to the issue of the day. So here's a headline that caught my attention last week. We had a pretty good uh, radio day the other day trying to explain this whole situation. Here's an eyewitness news package that uh, at least gives you the ballpark arguments. damaged cars are being repaired with manufacturer parts. If you have a manufacturer part put back in your new vehicle, you can go to your dealer if something goes wrong with that part and your dealer will assist you in the manufacturer warranty. If you have an aftermarket part in your new vehicle and that part fails, good luck. According to Rhode Island law, no insurance company may require the use of aftermarket parts when negotiating repairs with any repairer unless the repairer has written consent from the vehicle owner to install aftermarket parts. Currently, that law applies to vehicles that are up to 30 months old. Proposed legislation would increase it to 48 months. A win for consumers, according to Gina Petraca, a spokesperson for the Auto Body Association of Rhode Island. Auto body shops don't have a stake in this except that we want to fix the cars right. But the Property Casualty Insurers Association of America, known as PCI, is fighting back. We're concerned that this particular piece of legislation would drive uh, quality replacement parts out of the market, thus increasing costs for everybody. PCI's you know, Frank O'Brien says aftermarket parts are 25 to 30 percent cheaper than manufacturer's parts. And he says a recent PCI report shows the average claim in Rhode Island is already 26 percent higher than in neighboring states. Rhode Island's already a very, very expensive place to get your car repaired, much more expensive than the states that surround us. We have a lot of crashes. We have a lot of cars that need to get repaired. And this is just going to make a bad situation even worse. All right, I think that's a real good executive summary. By the way, that package aired two weeks ago. I'm confirming by the participants who are both in that new story, Frank to my left and Gina to my right, opposite on your television screen. Welcome to both of you. Thanks for joining me. Um, you think these guys are, are, are trying to soak the consumer or, or, or penalize the insurance business or both? What? Well, we think that they're trying to make more money. And, uh, and so are you. Of course. You said that on the radio last week. You we're know, here to make money. Well, I mean, we're both in a profit-making business or trying to make a profit. And uh, the problem here is in Rhode Island is that it's a very expensive place to buy insurance. Uh, we're a dense state. We crash into each other a lot. And it costs us a lot more to repair a vehicle uh, here in Rhode Island than it does pretty much anywhere else. You don't dispute that, Gina, do you? No, I don't. Um, however, I do dispute the cause and effect. Uh, we, we have been supporting consumer protection legislation for years. We believe that any law that gives consumers a choice and information can't be wrong. There's no difference in this bill this year in that uh, consumers can choose the aftermarket part if they want. Uh, that is their option. This is not about body shops making more money. In fact, um, there is a markup on parts and aftermarket parts and OEM parts, approximately 25%. Um, if you take OEM, a, I'm sorry, original equipment manufacturer. Okay. So that's from your manufacturer of your vehicle. That's the original part. Mm -hmm. The aftermarket part is a um, replacement part not made by your manufacturer. So if you have a $500 uh, original bumper, your aftermarket is probably going to be about $375. The difference in the markup for a body shop is about $25. This bill is not about money. This bill is about fixing the car correctly, maintaining the integrity of your vehicle. Uh, it, right, so, so you're telling, if I hear you correctly, you're telling me that your markup will be the same no matter what the, the source of the, the new product is? The percentage markup is the same. The percentage now, is. So the difference in the percentage in the price of the part um, for you know, an aftermarket versus a manufacturer, there's certainly a difference. But again, on a $500 manufacturer bumper, the difference between the the cost for the um, shop is $25. Do you s dispute any of that data? No, I think that Gene has actually made part of my case for me because aftermarket parts, quality aftermarket parts, are 25 to 30 percent less costly than original equipment parts. And uh, the percentage that the body shop makes on an aftermarket part or original part 
may be the same, but the dollar amount that they're going to make Obviously. is if, less. If you've done the old math of the now, new math, you can figure that out. One right. of the things that there, there's a couple advantages that comes with the use of, of aftermarket parts. One Hold of, that thought, because okay. I'm sure you want to develop it when we come back. We'll kind of set the table, we'll get into the nitty gritty. Stay with us. Consumers have a choice when replacing exterior car parts that are often banged up in an accident. We don't always have to use car company service parts. There are also alternative parts, generic parts, sometimes called aftermarket parts, that are available at a much lower cost. You know, what's interesting is that behind the scenes here, we're having a chat. There's a lot of agreement, I, I think, by both sides, the auto body industry that Gina represents and the insurance industry that Frank represents about the high cost of fixing a car once it's jammed yeah. up. That's Absolutely. not in dispute at all. No, no not so at all. The, the how-to is, um, is uh, what's at stake here. But you were making a point saying that you thought Gina's discussion of a price ratio difference between aftermarket and manufactured parts makes your point. Yeah. Uh, well, duh. I mean, listen, so a part's $500 and another part's 375 it's less money. Right. Her argument is going to be quality. Of course. Quality. And so why is her argument making your well, argument? Well, our, our argument is that the quality is the same. And the fact that you have aftermarket parts available in the marketplace does two things. First, it gives the consumer a choice whether or not they want to use an aftermarket part or an OEM part. And we think consumers should have a choice. The second thing it, that it does is that it keeps the automobile manufacturers, the manufacturers of the original equipment parts, honest with their pricing because it provides some competition. When you don't have competition, the original equipment manufacturers can charge what the pro what the market will bear, and that frankly is one of our concerns with with the bill that uh, the Automobile uh, Auto Body Association of Rhode Island has proposed. It would. Uh, put in place a situation where aftermarket parts would be, in a sense, discriminated against, and it would put cost pressure on repairs. And when you have cost pressure, it's basic economics that it goes on through and could potentially impact insurance prices as well. A few things. First, I want to make sure that the um, viewers understand that this law already exists for vehicles that are 30 months or newer and has for the last 20 years. Important to note. So this extends to 48 months. Right. And you made a point about the new lease life of vehicles. Uh, most leases now are running to four and five years. Right. Most leases are running to four years where you have to, for most leases, uh, repair it with original parts or they will charge you when you return your lease. Uh, most manufacturer warranties are 48 months. So we're trying to just keep in line with the times. So to suggest that the end of the world will occur, that was um, that was a prophecy when this original bill was passed for the 30 months, and that didn't happen. Um, insurance rates didn't skyrocket based on using manufacturer parts. Well, did they go up? They went up, but in yes. line with the rest of the country. Now, Rhode Island has been... Cause and effect, though, on the bill? In other words, did the bill that protected for 30 months you know, the uh, manufacturer no. part replacement, did that have an impact on rate? Absolutely not. We believe it did, but I would... Why well, did you dispute that? Well, there is no data that? to see. I, I gave you some graphics over the last... Um, sure. can, uh, can we show those graphics while you're speaking? Because I just... Sure. Uh, 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 Eric, see if you can uh, put the Auto Body Association stuff up, then Frank will have his turn for show and tell as well. Uh, the, just just throw me the uh, a series of auto insurance screens if you can. So that's that's profits. Well, we can we can talk about that. All right, um, next one. But and that's important to talk about because yep. All right. So auto um, next one actually. Keep going. Keep going. <laughs> There we go. There we go. Okay. So this is uh, data is a little bit old. It, the new data extends to 14, but I didn't get a chance to update it, but it is more of the same. So uh, PCI says from 2003 to the present, auto body shops have supported bills that have, you know, have dramatic increases on insurance rates. This was done to uh, show the 
compare us to where we should be compared to, which is New York, New Jersey, um, DC, because they're metropolitan areas, com comparable insurance markets to ours, not Maine, New Hampshire, and Vermont, which are not comparable insurance is, markets. Is, is Mass comparable? Mass is not comparable really either. They are um, they are considered 91% um, metropolitan, rather. They have a very different insurance um, laws. They have PIP, they have all kinds of things that control the insurance rates that have nothing to do with auto body repair costs. Okay. So, so those graphics. The bottom line, that graphic means what? Means that you, if you look at it, you'll see the trend over the last 10 years has gone exactly with all of the same um, metropolitan areas. E e the dips, the ups, the downs, they don't have the laws we have. They don't have the consumer protection laws we have, and we're still in line. We are not an anomaly is the point. So we, what's your response to that? You know what? I can put up as many different graphs with as many different spaghetti lines. You want to try? Any and we do. Different you want to try? You want to put yours up too? Just for <laughs> right just equal opportunity? Uh, just throw them up in, 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 uh, in, in order and we'll, we'll, we'll take a look at them and at the end of this. This is uh, about uh, insurance company repair costs. I'm not sure. That this, that's hard for you to read even if you have a 72 inch screen. But the next, the next one, uh, talk to me about this. Labor rates. Well, one of the things that makes uh, Rhode Island unique is that there's pressure on the labor rate side of things here, and that the labor rates are are part of the, the cost of getting a vehicle repaired here in Rhode Island, and there continues to be upward pressure on that. Are we higher by six dollars? Is that what I'm looking for, looking at uh, to comparable states? Six dollars an hour? Is that what I'm reading there? Uh, the states are all over the place. Rhode Island's a little higher than some states, a little lower than other states. What about states. Mass? I think that's the big. Well, we are. We're, we're ten dollars lower than the national average. 2017 national auto body labor rate average was fifty-six dollars and thirty-eight cents. We're ten dollars lower. Okay. So. You know, comparing us again to neighboring states is is just false. It costs more money to do business here. Um, but forty six dollars an hour, we've been forty six dollars an hour since two thousand nine. As, as a consumer, I don't get my pennies in a bundle over a forty six dollar an hour rate. I'm thinking I, I want I want a quality mechanic, and I want to th I want that quality mechanic to be making a a, a pretty good wage so that they're happy in their job. So right. they got to be taking twenty five dollars out of that. I would hope at least. At so, least. So right. Your family owns Providence Auto Body. I'm sure that they're, you know being fair to employees but they're taking a piece of that 46 I, I don't see a I don't see a lot of and fat in that do you we're pay we're able to get vehicles repaired here in Rhode Island it's a competitive marketplace there are a lot of shops here doing business we're not we don't have a problem getting people to take what we're willing to pay to get a vehicle repaired well and can I I'm not sure that answered my question but I get your point well and and can I say that when we are accused of having the highest repair costs, you know, there's not recent data on that. Um, we have, we may have high claims costs, we're 10 to 13 percent higher than the national average. Again, nothing that anyone would be shocked at for the standard of living in Rhode Island. Two, um, back to insurance rates. One thing that no one ever talks about is the effect of uninsured motorists on insurance rates. So, um, and we got a bunch of them here. Well, yes, we do. We are actually 13th highest. Highest uh, or 16th highest, my photographic memory might fail me, but we're in the teens um, for uninsured motorists. Whereas New Hampshire, Maine, and Vermont, actually Maine is the last, has the least uninsured motorists. New Hampshire, Maine, and Vermont um, are all in the top lowest 10. I think Massachusetts is in the bottom 25. So there are so many things that put pressure on insurance rates, and it is not, I have not seen a statistical correlation between any auto body bill that has been passed, our repair rates, our um, trends in repair rates, and of course it influences it, but it is not the reason why we're high, we've been historically high. Right. And profits at here in Rhode Island are historically right, high we'll for insurance. We'll get Frank's reaction mm -hmm. to that. And I have a question uh, just about how the whole insurance cost issue is understood by the consumer when we come back to this. All right, so that's the inside of the auto body shops, and uh, my gosh, there are plenty of them around here. There, it's a it's a pretty competitive business, no doubt. But the conversation here is about the industry as a total, and and the insurance costs. Uh, you know, listen, I think Gina makes a, a lot of salient arguments. 
are, are, is there a, a, like a tokenism about the insurance company's battle on some of these bills? Just being there to keep arguing that things are just expensive, knowing that you're going to lose these arguments from time. You know what I mean? I, I, I'm trying to I'm trying to figure out whether you guys are just doing it for the sake of doing it, or whether there's a clarion call for the consumer to stand on their head and say no to Gina's crowd. I. I I, I don't sense that. I don't sense that um, urgency from you or the insurance argument. I other than just you know just trying to you know just trying to represent the industry and just keep things kind of tense. You know what I'm saying? Well, do you hear me? I do. I've been doing this for a long time, and one of the things I try to pride myself in is to make sure that you can disagree without being disagreeable. No, I think you guys are total professionals now, in the argument, but I, I, I just you know, don't the, sense... The, the tokenism, the, I, 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 I take issue with the word and the question behind it. Um, you know, we're out there, we, we sell a product that everybody needs. And, and, or by law, or should, or buy. By law should buy. Because right. nothing gets sold, nothing moves, uh, nothing gets bought without an insurance component. And one of the things that we're trying to do is we're trying to make sure that the product that we're providing is a good value to consumers. That we're charging a fair price for the risk that's being presented to us. And we feel an obligation when we feel that things are going in the wrong direction but I don't to know do that, something but Frank, about I don't know that the, the, the consumer, we only have a couple minutes here, so uh, we'll hurry up on this one. I don't know that the consumer really is bothered by pricing unless they see a direct correlation between pricing and premium. They hope with a deductible, and a deductible is a whole nother bailiwick in the industry that we can talk about some other day. Mm -hmm. Whether you pay it, whether you don't, who's who's covering, who's not. Sure. Uh, and I know that there's loggerheads a lot. I, I, the, the, the people come in from the insurance industry and you know write up the deal and approve it. You know, there's a lot of conversation daily on the floor about whatever car is coming on that particular day, right? Correct. But I don't know that the consumer gives a rat's patooey as long as they're covered. Now, if they see the premium go up by X amount of percentage in the next year because they had a claim, that's another conversation altogether. So I, that's where the consumer is trying to figure out who to choose here. Well, and then, like, who's right? We only have like 30 seconds, so go ahead. Well, I, I, there are some insurance companies who already do what is being proposed to be mandated by law. There are some insurance companies that will not use aftermarket parts as a policy. So uh, it, it's an interesting question you ask because Frank represents a very large group of insurers, some of whom in that group... Which are not monolithic? Exactly. No. So I, I, I think the no, no, no to everything is, is probably the only agreement they can get between themselves. Well, there's the last <laughs> foot. You've got the last word. You know, consumers should be concerned about this and care about this because a lot of things go into their insurance premium. And the fact of the matter is that cost matters and it increases costs and that's a bad thing for us and for consumers. Follow this in the legislature. The Senate's got to vote and the House will look at it probably in the short term. Thank you both. Appreciate your, Thank you. Thank your you. participation. What we have tomorrow next. Stay with us. Tomorrow, East Providence and how they choose their counselors, two years, four years, it's a controversy that has been brewing there and the State Board of Elections has engaged the argument. We'll have uh, Steve Erickson, a former district court judge who sits on that board, to talk to us about that tomorrow. Don't forget, we'll see you on the radio at 3 until 6 on WPRO. Thanks for watching. Pay attention to this auto body bill because uh, consumer be beware, right? Right? Say bye.